Hey guys, Mono here. In this video, I'll be going over how to be a good machine gunner in Hella Loose. Actually, no, I'll teach you how to be the best f***ing machine gunner ever. You'll be so good, you'll be able to pick up girls at a bar with your stories of how you destroyed the enemy team with your MG42. Your wife will actually be interested in your Hella Loose stories. You'll be like, Babe, I completely annihilated the enemy team last round. I murdered so many people. It was absolutely glorious. For real though, let's get started on the topic at hand. I think the machine gunner can be one of the most powerful infantry classes in the game, but its playstyle can also be misunderstood quite easily. What I specifically mean by this is that some players might expect to just perch up on a window and completely dominate everything on their line of sight, and before they know it, they get headshotted from 300 meters away. So let's talk about the single most important topic here, and that is positioning. I'll break this down into four main concepts. Setup, distance, height, and angle. Setup means where you are actually gonna set up the MG. Is it gonna be on a window, on a hedgerow, on a couple of sandbags? Pro tip right now is try and avoid all of those. Basically, if you can think of a scene in a movie where an MG was firing from, then avoid it at all costs. I'll show you what I mean. Look at these bunkers. Now, if this were real life, that would probably be the best location to set up your machine gun. It's a great, massive, sturdy defensive position with great line of sight, right? Well, yes, but this is a video game, so when you start firing at people, the first place they look for you is right here, and the player model is extremely visible when it's in these situations. It's immediately noticeable when someone is firing from inside a bunker, or from a trench, or from a window. And this being a video game, we all have 100% perfect aim, there's no wind to account for, no shaky hands, nothing. So, more often than not, you are just giving an enemy the perfect shot directly to your head. So, it's best to try and set up somewhere unexpected. Try to look for unusual places where you can go prone and prop up the bipod from. Yes, mounting the MG is very finicky, so there's a lot of trial and error involved in this, but if you're gonna be shooting from a destroyed house, don't use the windows. Try to set up on the roof or off to the side or something. And if you do use the windows, then use them at an angle so your body is mostly hidden, at least from one of the sides. Can these more obvious positions work? Yes, of course they can, but they aren't very good, precisely because they are obvious. They can, however, be amazing when you have the second part of the equation and probably the single most important aspect to good positioning with the machine gun, and that is distance. Put simply, the further away you are from the people you are shooting, the better. You'll see this a lot in the gameplay clips that I'll be showing in this video. I am often shooting at targets that are 300 meters, 350, 400 meters away. At that distance, hitting a target with an MG isn't very hard. You don't really need to be super precise because you're firing off a storm of bullets at your enemies and as long as some of them hit, then you're good. But firing back at that machine gunner is going to be much, much harder. With a rifle, you are going to need to be precise, and that's going to be extremely hard to do so from far away, especially when you can barely see where the shots are coming from and you're being suppressed. Distance is the number one priority, I'd say, almost always. Let's put it this way. If you can have the same line of sight from further away, then you should probably be further away. Hella Loose renders players up to 500 meters, so that's the practical upper limit you want to be at, but it's not something you really need to worry about in basically any map. But yeah, you can shoot at people with an MG from that distance, basically no problem. One thing I didn't mention yet is how important map awareness, map knowledge, and just overall game knowledge is to understand where the enemies are coming from, where they are likely to be running through, and so on. Sometimes you won't even be shooting at visible enemies, but rather just suppressing or shooting at hedgerows to prevent the enemies from being able to attack or move. I'll link to a video of a match that I think perfectly showcases this. It's a match where I'm trying to hold a strong point in offensive mode, and I'm just spraying every possible angle of attack with the machine gun, and it's extremely effective. It's especially useful to know which hedgerows you can shoot through 
and which you can't. Basically, you can't shoot through the tall ones and you can shoot through these other ones. And I can't overstate how devastating this can be. If you think there's a small chance there might be some enemies behind a hedgerow like this, then definitely try spraying it. And if you do get some hit markers, then keep attacking the point until you stop getting hits consistently. You can shut down an entire enemy push or delete an entire defensive line doing this. So to sum it up, my way of finding a good position to set up is to think about where I want to be shooting at and using my map knowledge to find a spot where I can see what I want to shoot at while being as far away as possible. Again, pay attention to the footage I'll be using here and you'll notice I'm usually extremely far away from my targets. The next point is height. Players just don't look up in Helladu. So if you can set up on a rooftop or on a crane or pretty much anywhere that's you know, not a window on a second floor or something, you'll be invisible to most players. I will again link to another of my video guys. This one shows some tricks and techniques for how to climb up buildings and get into unexpected locations. Height, of course, often means having a great line of sight. So that's another benefit of trying to set up as high as possible. There is one building specifically that's present on several maps where you can jump onto the roof and perch up on the chimney by either setting up the bipod there or going prone on top of it. I can't tell you how often I set up there and seem to be completely ignored by the entire enemy team while I'm mowing them down left and right. All right, and the last topic to go over in terms of positioning is angle. You think being at the end of a street or a river with the enemy heading straight towards you is a great way to rack up a lot of kills and it can definitely work but it's also easy for the enemy team to counter that with their own MG or a sniper or just a quick peek from a rifleman. Ideally, you don't want to set up right next to other teammates where the enemy is already engaging at, but rather at an angle so you can see the enemy moving left to right or vice versa. Obviously, this won't specifically work on a street where you have buildings blocking your view, but you get the point. You can see from the footage here in Purple Heart Lane that I was shooting the sides of the enemies trying to push into the point. So while they were focused on hiding from my teammates directly in front of them, they were leaving themselves completely exposed from my perspective. I racked up so many kills here, I went on a 38 kill streak that basically ended when they started dropping smoke artillery on me to shut me down. To sum it all up, a good position is one that isn't obvious, is far away, and up high and not directly in front of the enemy attack. That is pretty much all it takes to be effective as a machine gunner. Positioning is 90% of what you need to be successful since the bullet drop is fairly minimal and the rate of fire allows you to take enough shots to be able to hit your targets even if your aim is pretty bad. However, let's go over a few more tips to help you get the best out of the machine gunner class. So first of all, if you're running around run with your pistol. Hip firing with the machine gun is best when you anticipate an enemy because you can hear their footsteps or something, but if you're gonna be moving around, the pistol is gonna be way more useful, though it is hard for you to win a 1v1 anyway. So yeah, don't panic fire it, aim for the head if you can, since you'll have maybe one or two shots before the enemy kills you, so you have to make those first few shots count. Hip fire, as I said, is best when you get the jump on the enemy. Controlling the recoil is extremely hard sometimes, but you really only need to get one shot into the enemy, so it's actually extremely powerful at close or even medium range. The MG42 is harder to control than, say, something like the Russian DP, because the fire rate on the Russian gun allows you to control it and correct your aim much easier, but the MG42 obviously has the benefit of having an insane fire rate, so you can just spray around and maybe get a few shots in. Speaking of control, this is something I'm not super good at, and that is burst firing. I tend to think of burst firing as being the best when you can see your target clearly and there's no place where he can quickly find cover to avoid your shots. So even if you miss your first few bursts, you'll be able to try a couple more times to get your enemy. However, firing continuously also has its benefits. First off, 
it's way more effective at shutting down enemy movement, especially if you're firing through smoke or through some hedgerows. It's also great at picking off enemies that you can't see that might be going prone or might be behind the enemies that you do see. So just mix both styles depending on the situation and see what works best for you. Obviously, don't just hold and unload the entire clip at once because that's not gonna be effective at all. So when you do wanna spray, you know, hold for a few seconds, then let off, then hold again, and just make longer bursts, if you will. And that's gonna be it, guys. That's pretty much all you need to be a good machine gunner. Obviously, you're gonna need a lot of map knowledge for this role, which I can't really overstate. It's good if you have a squad leader that tells you where to set up and where to shoot, Though you don't really need the squad leader to be using his binos to spot for you or anything like that. There are a lot of things that the squad leader needs to be doing and that's kind of at the bottom of the list. It can be useful but it's not really necessary. So yeah, I don't advocate for the squad leader to stay with you and you know mark off targets unless you're playing extremely defensively or something like that and you've already set up garrisons and defenses and everything else. So that's going to be it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share it and comment and all of that that helps the video get discovered. As always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.